Yeah, kind of. Okay, let's do the other one. So we just multiply by minus one, so we take the opposite of that. It will be axi plus b, and we'll write that as x, xi a plus b minus yi. And, oh, sorry, I forgot the n here. And let me just reorganize that by actually putting, you know, all the a's together. That means, actually, I will have sum of all the xi squared times a plus sum of xi times b minus sum of xi yi equals zero. So, if I rewrite this, it becomes sum of xi squared times a plus sum of the xi's times b minus one. Let me move the other guys to the other side. Equals sum of xi yi. And that one becomes sum of xi times a, plus how many b's do I get from this one? Well, I get one for each data point. When I sum them together, I will get n. Very good. So n times b equals sum of yi. Okay, now these quantities, they look scary, but they're actually just numbers, right? So for example, for this one, you look at all your data points. For each of them, you take the value of x, and you just sum all these numbers together. So what you get, actually, is a linear system in A and B. A two-by-two two linear system. And so now we can solve this for A and B. So in practice, of course, First, you plug in the numbers for xi and yi, and then you solve the system that you get. Okay, and we know how to solve two by two linear systems, I hope. Okay, so that's how we find the best fit line. Now, why is that going to be the best one instead of the worst one? You know, we just solved for a critical point that could actually be a maximum of this error function d. Well, so we'll have actually the answer to that next time. Uh, but trust me, if you really want to go through the second derivative test that we'll see tomorrow and apply it in this case, it's quite hard to check, but you can see it's actually a minimum. So I'll just say... We can show that it's a minimum. for the linear case is the one that we are the most familiar with, least squares interpolation actually works in much more general settings. Okay. Because instead of fitting for the best line, if you think that there's a different kind of relation, then maybe you can fit, you know, in using a different kind of formula. So let me actually illustrate that with an example. So I don't know if you're familiar with Moore's law. It's something that's supposed to tell you how quickly, basically, computer chips become smarter, faster and faster over time. It's a law that says things about the number of transistors that you can fit onto a computer chip. So here I have some data about... Oh. Why did... So, okay, better. So here's data about the number of transistors on, uh, you know, standard PC processor, 
as a function of time. And, well, you know, if you try to do the best line fit, well, you'll see quickly that it doesn't seem to follow a linear trend. Okay. On the other hand, if you plot the diagram in a log scale, you know, with, so the log of the number of transistors as a function of time, then you get a much better line. Okay. And so, in fact, that means that you had an exponential relation between the number of transistors and time. And so actually that's what Moore's law says. It says that the number of transistors on a chip doubles every, so depending on the version, every 18 months or every two years. Uh, they keep changing the statement. But so how do we find that best exponential fit? Well, so an exponential fit would be something of a form y equals a constant times exponential of a times x. Okay? That's what we want to look at. Well, we could try to minimize a square error like we did before, but it doesn't work well at all. The equations that you get are very complicated. You can't solve them. But remember what I showed you on this log plot Right? If you plot the log of y as a function of x, then suddenly it becomes a linear relation. So observe, this is the same as ln of y equals ln of c plus ax. And that is a linear best fit. So what you do is you just look for the best straight line fit for the log of y. So, that's something we already know. But you can also do other examples. For example, let's say that, you know, we have something more complicated. Let's say that we have actually a quadratic law. So, for example, y is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And of course, you, you're trying to find, you know, somehow the best, so that would mean here fitting the best parabola through your data points. Well, to do that, you would need to find A, B, and C. Okay, and now you would have actually a function of A, B, and C, which would be the sum of all data points of the square deviation. And if you try to solve for critical points, so now you will have three equations involving A, B, and C, and in fact you will find a three by three linear system, and it works just the same way, just you have a little bit more data. So basically, you see that these best fit problems are an example of, you know, minimization problem that maybe you didn't expect to see minimization problems come in but that's really the way to handle these questions. Okay, so tomorrow we'll go back to the question of how do we decide whether it's a minimum or a maximum, and we'll continue exploring functions of several variables.